Hello everyone, we're here today with another stream and today we're going to be building an events calendar in Webflow. We're going to use a library that is called Full Calendar and we're going to tweak a little bit to implement some potential use case for many businesses. I think it's going to be fun. So let's get started. That's a sweet. Okay, so. The idea is that we want to implement this library in Webflow. <clears throat> now, this is a library that basically it, it allows you to set up a calendar super easily on, a, on any website. And out of the box, it has many different functionalities. It's super powerful. You can just fit it a bunch of events and it already just creates the calendar for you. It shows all the different months, all the days you can, you can you have multiple options like making the calendar interactive, creating repeated events, fitting the calendar from external sources like Google Calendar. You can um, create, well, you can change the type of views, you can customize all the stylings, you can do a lot of things. I would love to not only do that, but because we're building for Webflow, right? So I think it, it will be cool if we can also integrate it with the Webflow CMS. Right? Maybe we, um, my idea is that we're going to create an events calendar, but those events are going to come from Webflow CMS. So imagine any kind of business, mm -hmm. maybe they have some kind, I don't know, a gym or a culture organize, uh, organizer, whatever. You can just create events and have that calendar and people can check those events. Maybe we could even um, allow people to submit uh, to, to purchase a ticket for an event or maybe to just make a reservation for that event. We'll see if we have enough time to do this kind of stuff. I have a fresh copy of Client First. This is just a, using the Client First clone. I have this in here and my idea is that we'll use this project to set up this calendar in here. But first of all, let's jump into the demos of the library because I think it, it's going to help you a lot understand what kind of stuff we can build with that. Um, so first of all, first demo, we have a cool calendar here. We can navigate through different months. We can just move to today. We have different views for the month, for the week, for the day, and a list of events. Um, inside, we can just look how cool is that. We can even drag events. We can. Uh, there are some events that are collapsed and we can see them in a pop-up. I think that's cool. This one seems that it has, yeah, this one even has a link so you can click on it. I think it's cool. Then a timeline here. Nice. Some grade, some year views, selectable dates. Nice. So you can even create events here. We, yeah, cool. We created an event. We can change this, we can see how different ways of setting events and how they are displayed here. Uh, this library has by default localization built in and time zones too. So I think this is gonna be cool. So all of this, we can use it. Let's see how we implement the base one, how we take the library and just put it in Webflow so it works, right? The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a fresh copy of our developer starter template. So I'm just going to create a new repository. And in my case, I'll just name this stream calendar, full calendar, let's call it. Stream full calendar this is going to be public. Yep. Cool. So we have the new repository set up already. So I'll just open it with GitHub desktop. Um, ba -ba -ba -bam. yep, that works. I'm cloning that repo, so I'm fetching it. And now I think we're ready. Let me just open it in VS Code. Okay, so fresh copy of a developer starter repo. Cool. Then now let's set it up for Webflow. First of all, I just, I'm just going to install all the dependencies in the terminal. I'm going to run pmpm install. pmpm i is just like a uh, shortcut for that. Let's wait for a second. It's going to install everything. And once everything is installed, 
Let's wait a second until VS Code processes this. Let me just close and open it again because sometimes Prettier just breaks. I don't know why, but I think it should be fine now. Yeah, it is. Great. Everything is installed. Then what we can do now is just run pmpm dev. Okay, when you run pmpm dev, okay, that's definitely something here. Oh, because I think I have, I already have a local environment spin up. That's because I'm, I have too many things open in my computer. Let me do it again. Now, great. One cool thing that we added um, the other day in, in the repository starter is that now we have built in live reload. You will see that in a second, but essentially now this is telling me, okay, the files of the project are being built here in localhost. So if we visit this, we can see a code for that. Cool. So in, in right now we're just loading this. Let me remove everything and let's just console log. Hey, stream. Like that. I'll just get rid of all the boilerplate. So I don't want to use the utils. I don't want to use anything. I'll just use this index file. And let me zoom a little bit more. Great. OK, so console log, hey, stream. We have the developer, uh, the development environment set up, spin up. We have these local host serving our build files. So the only thing that I need now to do is I'll take this URL and I'll go to the home page in here and let's create a script tag for that. And the script is gonna use differ and the source it will be my file, the, the index.js file that I'm building from my project. That's it. We just publish that and we'll make sure that the code is running. So if in the console we see, hey, stream, that means that everything is set up correctly and we can start playing around with the full calendar library. So let's wait a second. Cool, done. Okay, let me open the console. Hey, stream. Great. This means that we have everything set up, yeah? So the code is running. And let me show you something cool. Um, since the last update that we did in developer started, now every time that I change any code, the page is gonna reload. So you see how this is changing? Hey, Demetrius. So uh, I don't need to be manually refreshing the page. Now the, the developer started, it's, it's, uh, it's just doing that for me. Every time that I'm doing any changes in the files, we see that live reload happening on the page and it's super convenient for development. So definitely go ahead and try it out if you're not using the template because it's really, it's really helpful. Okay, so we want to mount a calendar on the page, right? So the first thing that we have to do is go to the project, to the Waffle project, and we need to define somewhere where we want to put that calendar. So in our case, I'm just gonna delete all this boilerplate and I'm gonna keep just this container. And in here, we can just define this. We can define it with whatever we want. We could use CSS classes, we can use IDs, but you can use attributes, but as you probably know already, I'm a big fan of using attributes. So I'll just use an attribute for defining this. So I'm gonna maybe, let's call this calendar component. Oops. Calendar component. Yeah, and let me add it naturally to it. So uh, we can call this, I don't know, data element calendar, for example. Just keep in mind that everything that I'm naming here, it's fully up to you. So if you're doing this with me, you can always put use your own names because this is just, yeah, it's up to you. In my case, I'm defining this element as data element calendar, and this element is the one that is gonna contain the calendar when I mount it. On, um, in here, so let's just publish this. And, okay, we have the code. We need to get that element, right? So the first thing is true, 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 calendar element, for example, and we'll do a document query selector. Actually, let me disable copilot, because I don't want 
to be messing around here. And in this case, we're using data element, data element equals to calendar, like this, and it's an HTML element. Remember that we are using TypeScript, so in my case, I'm specifically defining the type of element that this is, which is an HTML element, or I could even be more specific and I could tell that it's a div element, but it, there's really not that much difference. It's basically the same. And if it happens that there is no calendar element, we'll return. That's it. So now when we load the page and we check for the calendar element, let's just check it. <clears throat> you can see that the code has already found the DOM node, the div that's supposed to be contained in the calendar. So now we're safe to take this div and instantiate the calendar JS. So I think that it will be cool if We'll just go through the documentation of full calendar so I can show you the basis. And you also can understand how to read documentation from libraries so you can implement them yourself. Um, when you go to full calendar, you can just go to docs. And I recommend that you always start with introduction. There's always some get started, introduction, how to set up, sections like this that they basically explain you how to, how to install something. In our case, uh, we have an introduction here, and we are, because we're using a code base, so we are, we're building the code here, we're going to use the ES6 build system, which is essentially just using NPM packages for importing that and putting it in our code base. If you happen to be working directly in Webflow, so for example, maybe you don't want to be setting up VS code, you don't want to deal with all that stuff, and you just want to write some custom code, here in the Waffle settings, you can always just uh, initialize with script tags, which is the traditional way of just importing a script tag and dumping some uh, Air JavaScript directly here. So up to you, whatever. In my case, I prefer to go with the ES6 build system. It's essentially just telling me, okay, just install a bunch of uh, packages, NPM packages, and then you can import them to just use them in, in your code base. And that's what I'm going to do. And actually, I think that I'll just do this. I'll just copy and paste literally this, this bit in here, which is the intro. So let's do this. npm install full calendar code, uh, core, day grid, time grid, and list. And then we'll walk through all of them to, to understand exactly what they do. So let me just copy this full calendar like this. And I'll install everything. So, da -da. let me just pmpm add. Oh, whoa. pmpm add, and this was full calendar core, full calendar day grid, full calendar time grid, and full calendar list. List. <clears throat> and I'll explain you now in a second why we are actually installing so many different packages. The reason is because uh, the full calendar library, it's split up between multiple functionalities. And maybe you need some of, of those functionalities, but maybe you don't need some of the other ones. So they basically just split up the entire library in different sub packages, and you can pick the ones that you really need. Because at the end of the day, then the the code that you're shipping, it's going to be smaller because you're just going to use the the bits that you really need, and that's it. But for now, I'm just installing this one because it's what the introduction is telling me. So let's do that. And we want to inst instantiate the the calendar. And as you can see, basically this takes just a class in here. So we'll create a new instance of that class of the calendar class. And the first argument is just the calendar element. Remember that we already handled that. We have here calendar element, and we got it. And then the rest is just options, stuff that you can throw at it to configure, to set up um, all the different functionalities of the, of the calendar. I'm seeing people asking questions. One thing that I will ask you to do is, instead of putting the questions in the chat, put them in the Q&A uh, panel. 
because in there uh, I see all of them and I can just organize myself by answering all those questions by order or by boats. You can also boat different different questions in there. So Sebo, the, the question that you just asked, it would be cool if you could put it there. Cool. So let's just copy this, that calendar, like this. And I'll, I actually going to use const, not let. So new calendar, first of all, I need to import this. And let me just copy it, all of this. We'll put it up here. So we are, we're importing calendar from the core. We're importing a bunch of plugins. And then we're just putting it in here. Calendar, well, we need to take the element. So let's put it here. So now we have a calendar instance that we just created. We passed to it the calendar element. And then we're passing some plugins to it and some default settings like the initial view and the settings for the toolbar, the top toolbar. But for now, let's just keep this and let's call calendar.render. This method is necessary. This method is just telling the, the library to, hey, now that I've passed you the options, please go ahead and put the calendar on the page. So let's check it out. Boom. We got a calendar. <laughs> and that's it, guys. That's the stream. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, so we, we already have a full-blown calendar on the page by just um, getting an element, passing a bunch of plugins, a bunch of options, and rendering that calendar after creating the instance. That's it. The, the library, the full calendar library, it's already taking care of everything. It's detecting the, the, the div that we passed to it, and it's just injecting the calendar inside. But now it's our job to set up this calendar to look the way that we want to. The first thing that we need for a calendar, it's obviously something to put in the calendar, right? <laughs> um, we need a bunch of events into it. And as I mentioned before, there are many ways that you can put events in, in a calendar. The easiest one is just by hard coding the events in the code. And that's what I'm going to do now. But we have multiple options of doing it. We could, sorry, we could connect a Google Calendar to it. We could just feed it a JSON file. We could just feed it some uh, external RSS feed that contains a bunch of events. We could do multiple things. But in our case, let's do the simplest one, that is just going to the code base. Remember that we defined all the calendar settings in here when we created the, the calendar instance. And in here, we have a events option. And inside the events option, we can just define a bunch of events. That's it. Um, let's just put something simple. Let's put a title, and we'll say fins with stream. And we'll also put a date <clears throat> or start. Let's put a date. And a date, it's going to be today. That's it. I think um, here in this date property, you can pass either strings. So I could do something like, what day is today? 2023.02.10. I believe that the format is this one. You can pass a string or you can pass a date object. So you could. Just do this, and basically this is saying right now. And let's check it out. Cool. So we have here FinSuite Strip. You can see that um, because I defined the, the current time at this moment, calendar, the full calendar, uh, it's smart enough to know that, you know, not only this day, but also the time of it. But if instead of defining a date object, I just pass a, an entire day, Let's put, for example, 2023, as I mentioned before, 0 to 10. <clears throat> now this is, does not have a specific time because that's just to find the entire day, right? So this is a way that you can pass a, an event, but we have a lot of customization here. We have a lot of options. And maybe instead of doing it in here, didn't I deactivate Copilot? Uh, in, let's just go to the documentation. <clears throat> Remember that everything that I'm explaining today, it's in the documentation of the library. In the documentation, there is a section for events. 
event model, event parsing. And in here, we basically have the explanation of every single thing that we could pass to an event. For example, we could pass a days a week. And when we pass this, we're going to essentially uh, tell to the calendar, hey, this is a recurring event that it's happening every three days, whatever. Let's put, for example, that days of week, what's it called? Days of week. Days of week, uh, let's put one, three, and five, for example. And the start date was today whatever. So hopefully this will show starting today, well actually not starting today, it, it made it every day. So there's probably not a, another config for that. But you can see that the event now is recurring every on the on Monday, on Wednesday, and on Friday, which are the days that I defined here. But maybe I think it's start, let's not use this one. Let's put start Start time, end time, start, end, title, URL. Let's put just a start and an end. So the start is going to be today at, uh, this was 2023-02-10, whoops, it should be string, at, well, what was the time? 3 p.m., I think. I think that that will work. Nope, that will not work. How about I do it like this? We probably have to pass, yeah. So we just pass this and let's put an end. The end is gonna be at 4.30 my time because I'm dealing with Spain time right now. Mm. But it looks like it's not putting it with an end. Let's, let's try multiple days. I'm sorry, yeah, but I, I just, I'm just testing this as we speak, I didn't test it before. Maybe I should have. 2023-02-11. And let's put it from today. 2023-02-10. What happens now? We're still having 15. Okay. So you can see that, for example, now what I did is just put um, a range. So instead of marking it for a specific day, you can just uh, set a start and an end, and these can differ by multiple days. Or you can just repeat it, as, as I mentioned, in, in, multiple, in multiple days of the week, etc. So I guess that everyone has seen how we can create events. Let's put a couple more. So let's put that this is just a today event, but also let's put another event that it's going to be called... I don't know, thin sweet party. And this is gonna happen on the 15th and just one day <clears throat> like this. And maybe we can add another one that's called uh, Alex's party. I don't know, I'm just gonna compete against thin sweet for the party. Let's see which one is the coolest one. <laughs> and this one, it's gonna happen on the 18th, for example. So we have now a bunch of events. The first thing that you can do in full, so for styling stuff in full calendar, you have two options. You have the option of passing the, the properties that full calendar allows you to pass. So let's go back to the event documentation. All of this, you can pass it to an event. And you will see that there are some options, like for example, background color, border color, text color, just color, whatever. So for example, I take my party and I say that I want a background color of red. This, this is probably accepting any kind of CSS color. My party now is red. But maybe I want to define Finswitch party as an entire color. And this is going to be, I don't know, CCCCC. And Finswitch party, it's a little bit less cooler than mine. <laughs> um, so you, you have the option of passing a bunch of properties that can alter how the calendar looks. In this case, I'm just altering the event. 
but in the the rest of the settings that I can pass here in the calendar, I have a bunch of uh, a, a bunch of settings for for styling. But the second option is to just <clears throat> extend the CSS of the calendar. You will see that basically every single element in here has a property for for that. And I think that you will not be able to style them using directly the designer because um, full calendar injects those styles uh, at the end of the head. Well, I believe that it, it injects the styles right after the script that we have defined, which means that these styles, the styles that calendar, the calendar library injects, are going to override any styles that you define here in the designer. So for example, if I define, let's just check this title. This title has a class that it's called FC toolbar title. So if I try to do it here, if I try to just do this and maybe I want to change the color and I want to put it as red and I publish this, <clears throat> let me just put it, whatever. Uh, you, this is going to be probably, this is probably going to be overridden. Oh, it's not. Okay, it's not. So I think that, <laughs> then I, I, I answer your question. <clears throat> Why is not? Because this is, this is in here. And this is in here. Oh, right, because maybe probably didn't have the color defined. Right, because this class, it doesn't have a color defined, but you can see that it has some font size, for example. If I try to change the font size for this, if I try to put six rems, this one, it's not going to work because for calendar, it's going to overwrite it. Yeah, so if I, I, if I inspect this, you can see that the color red is being inherited, but the font size of 6 RAM, it's not being inherited. Instead, it's just defined here <clears throat> as um, in the styles of full calendar. So the other option that you have is obviously just write some custom CSS yourself. So there's always, maybe we could put it here, or maybe you could put an embed in here. And inside this embed, you can always write the custom styles yourself. So you can just put that <clears throat> we want to overwrite this. So I'll just take this selector. I'll just copy and paste this. And in here, instead of font size like this, I want to put font size of 4M. And now this is going to work because mm -hmm. that style, it's after the styles that are injected by custom, uh, the full calendar library. So right now we have these events in here that are defined just manually, right? I just hard-coded these events myself. But let's do it a little bit better. <clears throat> let's go to, let me just remove this. Let's go to the Waffle project and we'll create a new collection. And let's just put, oh, events. Actually, there's, <laughs> there's a template for that, events. So name, start date, location, description, cool. Let's use that. And let's add 20 items, whatever. Cool. Okay, we have a bunch of them. Let's just publish this. So we have a bunch of events, but obviously we need to feed that content to the, to the actual library, right? We need to expose that content somehow. <clears throat> the best way that we can do it is by just using a, let me get rid of that a collection list. We'll put a collection list, we'll call it events in here, like that. And now, I think I'll show you one cool way of, of exposing uh, data to the, to the site. Actually, let me just do it. If you give me one second, I'll show you a really cool way that we can do this. In here, we could just do this. Don't be scared. Um, but in here, in, in the collection list, 
we, instead of just putting elements, so usually what you would do to expose some CMS data is just take the collection list and then maybe put some text block and in the text block you would put the, the name of the event and then maybe you would put another text block and, and with that text block I would put like the location, stuff like that, and then I would query the elements to retrieve the data from those elements, right? But there's a cooler way to do this. And it's that instead of adding DOM elements into it, we'll just add it, uh, HTML embeds and we'll paste some JSON inside them. So we'll just put a script and we'll define that script as an application type of JSON, which means that we can just put the data in there and then with JavaScript, we're going to retrieve that data from the scripts. So let me just put a bunch of fields. So let's put the name, let's call it title title and in here we'll put the the event name we'll put uh, what are the fields we have start date and date and location let's put start and and location like that so inside the start I want to put the start date inside and I want to put the end date and inside location I want to put the location yeah when when we publish this it's obviously just not going to show up on the page right because because it just JSON schemas so if we try and inspect the page <clears throat> there's nothing that we can see but the the collection list is there so if we check the collection list Inside that collection list, we have all these items, and each item has the script with the application JSON, right? With the with the content of JSON. So what we can do is let's just define this as an event. Let's call it. Let's call it in here data element uh, event data, for example. So we can query those these script tags. So let me just do that. And in here, we'll create a function, and this function is going to be called get events, for example. And inside these get events, we'll just get all the script text that we just created in Webflow, the, the script text that, that contain the JSON data. So we'll put uh, scripts, for example, and we'll say document query selector all, and we call this data element. Come on, I always forget how to write in the streams. So I feel pressured to write quickly. <laughs> and then I just mess up. Data element and that was event data, I think. And each one of these is a script tag, HTML script tag, script element. And for each of these scripts, we'll just map them to extract the JSON data from them. So let's just do events and we'll take the scripts, we'll destructure them and we'll do a map and inside this map we have the script tag and we want to return the JSON that is inside that script but we want to parse that JSON into an actual object right so what we can do is just say json.parse the script text content which is essentially just saying script text content or this just in case so we're essentially just saying hey take the text from inside this script so essentially this text in here this text and convert it to an actual JavaScript object that's going to contain the title the start the end and the location so and we'll return these events return and let's just try this and console log them events and get events like that and console log console log events and let's go to the page and hopefully it didn't work okay did I publish let's see one second data element equals to event data I think I'm querying it correctly data element equals to event data let me see if we have the scripts in here
Uh, am I having connection problems? Oh no, we're good. So, all oh, right, I'm just stupid. I'm not. <laughs> I was. I forgot to to return the events. Let me check again. Now we're talking. Okay, so see what we got here. So essentially, um, what we did is just take all the scripts, all these list items that we have with the script tags inside them, and we converted them into actual events, event objects, right? And each one of these contains a title, a start, an end, and a location, like that. So let me just, I want to type this. Let me create a type because I wanted to make things properly. So export type event, and this is a title, it's a string, start is a string, and it's a string, and location, it's also a string. And this get events, it's essentially returning an array of events event, event, like this. So now this object that we have here, hey, it's an array of events, yeah? And we can take these events and put them in here. That's it. So I'll just do this. Events, like that. Or one, one thing that I don't know if you know it, but in JavaScript doing this, it's the same thing as just doing this. Just passing the, the key of it. Let's check it out. Did it work? Did it not work? I don't know. Okay, let me see the events. Let's try to find one of these events. So the event it's on May 5th, 2022. Let's check it out. May 5th. It's not working, so something is definitely not working properly. And then start dates are backwards. Event is ending before the start date. Oh. Oh, right. Okay, let me let me just remove a bunch of them because it's getting pretty messy with all these boilerplate ones. And I'm sorry, this was not planned. I just do three of them. Delete. We'll do this one, and this one will go from, from today until until the 19th. For example, let me save this. And another one is going to go from, nope. It's going to go from the 14th to the 16th, for example. Thank you for your patience. I know that it's not fun to see me just digging into these items. And maybe another one. It's going to be from the 21st to the 25th okay Let, let's try it still not showing up and this might be something to do with the format of it so it starts on the february 10th but it ends at february 16th let me see something if i do new date this Oops. Does it work? It does. So maybe with the location, it's something that it's messing up. Let me just do some quick debugging here. Like this. Let's do it again. Is it start and end? Because maybe I'm even passing the wrong params. Just one second event model, event parsing. So start and end, we're passing that correctly. The title, we're passing that correctly. And the location, it's obviously not here, but this is something that I wanted to mention. You can actually pass some random values to the, uh, to the event objects. So double quote a property, okay. We're having more box. That's it. So something is not correct, and let me just 
copy one of these objects and let's put it in here just manually to see what's happening. So title start and end. It starts on February 10th, it ends on February 16th. Let's see if this works. February 10th, it does not. February 10th, 2023, yeah. I was about to say that. So maybe if we just do new date, we'll basically create a date object with the with this string that we have, new date. And yeah, I believe that this is gonna fix it. Yes, okay. So we found the issue. And the issue is basically that it's better to just pass a date object. So what I'm gonna do is when I'm looping through the events objects here, <clears throat> Let me just open this. Um, so the event is this. And essentially we have here JSON parse, this is an, an event. Um, and I don't wanna confuse you. Let me just remove this. And if there is no script text content, we will return like that. I'm just trying to make things the best we can. So, and this event inside it, I'm gonna take the start and end properties and I'm going to create a date object for them. So I'll just say event.start. It's a new date of the event.start. And we'll do the same for the event.end. It's a new date for the event.end. And this is complaining because I, I defined that this should be a string, but we'll just say that it's either a string or a date and it should be fine. And now we return the event like this. Not only that, but also we'll filter out the undefined ones. Events, return the event, sorry, like that. So it's either event or undefined because I'm returning here. Come on, I know that it is, is, it is in here, like that. Okay, so we're essentially just mapping through all these different properties and we're converting the start and end to a date object and then we're just returning this event. And in here, let me just get rid of this, I don't wanna confuse you. And in here, now that we have the events, we're just passing those events here and now, yay, it's working. Let me just tweak this. Let's call these events a proper name so we can just identify them. So one event, it's gonna be Fin Sweet Party. The other event, it's gonna be Alex's Party. And the other one, it's gonna be Penny's Party. Cause she identified a big bug. Thank you, Penny. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we have a bunch of parties and those parties are taking a bunch of days here. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm seeing I'm seeing this happening here. What could it be? It's probably because Webflow. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Webflow is just um, decoding, encoding. Sorry, encoding the HTML stuff. Probably because of the JSON. So we would have to decode this. So full calendar IO business calendar.com business calendly. What's the difference? Is one better than the others? Well, calendly is actually just a service that you can use. So calendly is essentially a tool that you pay for it and it handles the events for you. Um, it has the benefits, obviously, because you can just schedule events, you can do stuff like that. It's built in out of the box. And on the other hand, the full calendar library, it's just a uh, a a package, something that you can implement yourself. And on top of this calendar library, I could do whatever I want. Imagine, for example, that I want to add some extra JavaScript that when I click on one of these events, I go to the event template page. So imagine that we have a template page for the events. And in here, I can just put information about the event. I can put, um, let's just do it. Let's just do this super quick. So let's imagine that this is the event page, okay? 
And one of the properties that we can pass is the URL. So let's just put it in here. URL, and the URL, it's something that we can also do here. So let's just say events slug. I think it should be fine. Let's try it out. One second, let's see if it works. Ah, I always mess up. Coma. It's super easy to mess up in JSON if you don't have a linter, uh, sorry, an ID. Yeah, so events. It's going there, but it's not finding the proper. Oh, it's events. Sorry, the collection list was wrong. Let's do it again. But as you can see, we can just keep adding stuff on the events. And now, for example, when I click on this, it's just bringing me to a page for the Fincy party. Or it's bringing me to my Alex's party. Or to P Penny party. Come on, Penny's party. Today, I completely forgot how to type. OK, guys, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> There are other things that you can do. For example, imagine that I want to listen for when the user clicks on an event. There's an option for that that it's called event click. And when I click on an event, I can say data. Uh, I can just alert the user clicked the event data dot event dot title for example and when we do this well obviously it well this is not going to work because this is a url oh yeah well it works but essentially you can just add any kind of interactivity that you want on top of the calendar what we're doing in other in other places in FinSuite is that instead of using urls we have some pop-up some modal and we dynamically populate that model based on what the user clicks. So imagine that I click on this and then this opens a pop-up with some information about the event, or I can just show a form with a registration for that event. It's completely up to you. So one thing that I forgot to mention is that about these plugins, and I'm sorry that I didn't. If I disable this and we refresh the page, you will see that there's nothing here, okay? Um, as, I, as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, full calendar JS, it depends on all the plugins to work. So each functionality of the calendar, it's extracted as a separate package that it's called a plugin and you add it into it. So essentially, when I'm doing this, I'm just mentioning, hey, sorry, I want to have a day grid, I want to have a time grid, and I want to have a list, which are, which are the three different, whoops, let me save which are the three different views that we have in here, right? And each one of these is a plugin. So maybe I just want to use the month. So maybe I just, uh, sorry, the day grid, right? And now I don't have the other options. You can see that it's empty. And we in the header toolbar, I can define the order of this plugin. So if I just remove this, whoops. Now I'm just saying, okay, hey, on the right, I just want to have the day grid. That's it. But maybe I want to have the day grid and the time grid and not the list week. So I need to also install the plugin, time grid plugin, and now I will have both. So just keep in mind, sorry that I didn't mention this, keep in mind that many of the functionalities of the calendar are plugins that you need to add to be able to use them. And in the documentation, there's a full section of that with all the plugins. So that's basically the core, but the core does not show anything on the page. You need the, um, the plugins. So for example, the interaction plugin, it's the one that you would use to drag and drop stuff, to drag and drop events. The day grid, it's the one, this one. The time grid, it's the one for, with the times. The list, multi-month, scroll grid. There are some premium ones in case that you wanna pay for them. Etc. Just just keep in mind that it's important to know that these plugins are required to be able to display stuff on the page because otherwise it's nothing's gonna happen. 
So we're done. Um, we walked through the full calendar JS library. I think that this was a cool thing that we built. We integrated both the Waffle CMS inside it. So we, we feed events into the, the full calendar. And also we saw a bunch of other things that you can do the, like, with the library, like um, some customization of the styles, like uh, adding custom features on top of, of the events when you click on them, stuff like that. So definitely there's a lot more to do here, but it's a good start. If you want to start playing around with the library, feel free to do it. And if you like this, please share this video, give a like and comment, leave us any comments that you want. Thank you for watching this. Thank you everyone. Thank you.